Amen. Good morning, everybody. We're going to stand, and we're going to start our service by singing hymn number 457. And we're going to sing all the verses of, To God be the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. We can all attest that God has done great things in our lives, so we'll sing all the verses of 457. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved ye the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from jesus a pardon receives praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. And give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Great things he hath done. Amen. Well, it's good to have you to this morning. Glad that you're here. Welcome you that are online. Thank you for joining with us as well. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in order of prayer. Our Father, it is a joy to be able to uh, gather together this morning. And Lord, thank you so much that we can come and worship you. And Lord, sing your praises. And, and Lord, I pray uh, as a body of believers, Lord, help us, Lord, to Lord draw close to you this morning. May your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The next song we're going to sing is hymn number 150. Hymn number 150. We're only going to sing the first and the last of He Lives. He Lives. <clears throat> we serve a risen Savior. Amen. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me all along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, 
salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. On the last, rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives. He walks with me and talks with me all along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. And now listen as the choir sings, Sweet Jesus.
And now we're going to sing hymn number 482. Hymn number 482, as the choir makes their way down. <clears throat> I stand amazed. When I examine that old rugged cross, the mighty it reaches down to the brinks of hell to heaven's golden strand I stand amazed I stand sought me, saved me, and bought me, I stand amazed. When I imagine in glory that day, when all of heaven stood still, As God incarnate, the Savior of man, died upon Calvary's hill, I stand amazed, I stand Saved me and bought me, I stand amazed. Ushers, let's come this morning. We're going to take an offering. All right, this morning we have um, a guest with us. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brother brother Keith Davis. 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 And he is the president of Seed Line International. And uh, you might, uh, uh, when we took up the offering and to buy a roll of paper, it went to his ministry to help. Uh, to buy a roll of paper to print the Word of God. And so uh, today he's here just to say thank you. And, uh, and so, Brother Keith, right there where you're at, would you please stand? And would you mind uh, maybe saying a few things and then lead us in a word of prayer? All right, would you mind? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right.
Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. Thank God for grace. Amen. It is good to have you this morning. Glad that you're here. Take your Bible and turn to 1 John chapter number 3. 1 John and chapter number 3 is where we'll be at eventually. 1 John chapter 3. And if you're able to, would you please stand? First John chapter 3, welcome. It's good to, good to see everybody. Welcome again, you that are online. And we hope and pray that the word of God will be a blessing and, and he'll find lodging. And uh, amen. Well, we are already uh, done with January. February is now upon us and uh, can't wait for spring to come, that's for sure. But uh, we're going to have a, have a sort of a, a tidbit of that. We're going to see a lot of the sun. And uh, someone, someone texted me and says, Preacher, look, the sun, it's out. And uh, they were so excited, and no doubt. But uh, I'm so very thankful for, uh, obviously, our Lord and what he has done in our lives. And, and uh, we're going to be talking about a, a very... Uh, important subject matter, and that is that of love today, and we'll be spending some time this month on it, uh, but um, I think it's important that we do so, but uh, uh, let's get started. First John chapter 3, in verse 1, the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The Bible says in verse number three, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of, of being called uh, a child of yours. Lord, I pray that we'll understand how important, uh, Lord, uh, you are in our lives. And even today, I pray that you would help us to truly understand who you are. Thank you so much for your word this morning. Bless the reading of it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Obviously, when you, when you talk about love, it's, it, is a, it is a big subject, no doubt. It is all over the Word of God. It, just in this particular book alone, you're looking at chapter 3 and chapter 4, for sure. But obviously, it's in other places as well. We're not going to uh, exhaust it today, for sure. But, oh, I tell you, I feel uh, so vitally... Uh, I feel like it's so important to address the subject of love, to keep us uh, in mind of it, and, and uh, to because we live in a world today where, sadly enough, the, the word love has been hijacked, and it, it means so much other than what the Bible says today, or at least that's what the world's trying to... And so we need to stay close to what the Bible says. And obviously... We know according to 1 John chapter number 4 that the Bible defines for us that God is love. And uh, uh, in other words, what that simply means is that everything that God does, he always does with love. In other words, that's who he is. God never does anything without love. I know sometimes that is hard to understand and, 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 and yet, yet uh, notice if you would with me in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7 right quickly. The Bible says it like this. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. And so we, we are told that love, you know, this love, agape love, God is this. God is love, and it's and and it's and it's it helps us to understand God. We it also helps us to understand life in general and and what we go through because we we know that that who God is and God is love and therefore everything God does, even though we don't always understand it, we know that that he he does. He does it with love. He, and, 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 and so, so that, I believe, without a doubt, would help us. But with that being said, we find in uh, 1 John chapter 3 a very interesting take when it comes to, uh, as John writes here, he's writing about being a child of God. Uh, and, and, and he, he says, behold, what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And, uh, and I tell you what a great privilege it is to be a child of, of the king, to, to know that you're saved. But, but John writes here, he, he writes about something that, that I, I, I just want to bring to your attention before I get into the sermon. And that is this, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. In other words, the fact that you and I are a child of God, what, what has been so overtaken by John and, and has really got him all excited, and that is this. My goodness, this is what he sees. He, when, he, when he thinks about being a child of God, he says, My goodness, look how much God loves me. That's what he's thinking. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And, and I tell you, uh, and so we find that concerning our, even our own salvation, that it is because of love that God sent his only begotten son, right? And, and so how important it is. And, and John is, is just overwhelmed by that. What did God, that we would be overwhelmed. That we would not forget what God did by sending his only begotten son. 
and that we would be so overwhelmed uh, to think what God did to save my soul. That he sent his only begotten son. That he gave his bare, I mean, I can go on and on and on this morning. This morning we want to look at a few definitions of love this morning. And first of all, it's a powerful love. As a child of God, if there's, if, if there's one thing that you and I need to understand about uh, our relationship with the Lord and, and this subject matter of love when it comes to, to you and I and, and, and the Lord, and that is this, it is a powerful love. Well, what do you mean, preacher? Well, though, though we could look at different subjects, take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 8 right quickly. Romans chapter 8, and probably here's, here's a... Here's a segment that is so, is, you know, kind of kind of reveals to us how powerful it is. Romans chapter 8, please. And the ideal is, 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 is that, it, that it may encourage us. The ideal is that it might, it might give us assurance and confidence in the things of God. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 39... <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 and verse number 39, the Bible says, well, I'm going to start with verse 35 just to bring you a little bit of context. Who who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake are we killed all the day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter? Nay, The Bible goes on and says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so so we are reminded of, of, uh, as the the writer writes here, we are reminded of no, no doubt struggles and hardships and all of those things. That's in the backdrop of what he's trying to get across. And yet he says, though, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In other words, it is through Christ. But, 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 but listen, as I read on, the Bible says in verse number 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, no matter what it is that you and I face, no matter how strong it may be, no matter how big it may be, listen to what it says in verse number 39, nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I tell you, the writer here is is trying to emphasize no doubt the power of the love of God and how how strong it is and and that no matter what it is that you and I face, that that God loves us and 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 there's not anything that you and I, that, that can separate us from that love. I don't know about you, but I tell you how faithful God is when it comes to his love and, 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 and there's not, no matter what it is that you and I face, you, can, you and I can count on the fact that God loves us and how important that is. I tell you, would to God that we would remember that when we do go through trials and when we go through, go, do go through hardships. You know, people may leave us, people may fail us and all, but God never does. And, 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 and he's going to be there with us. It is a powerful love. But not only that, something else, it's a forgiving love. It's a forgiving love. Well, Proverbs chapter 10, please. Take your Bible and turn there. Proverbs 10. You know, <clears throat> I truly believe that um, There's probably some confusion about forgiving and, and uh, what that means and all of that. But, well, the Bible is quite plain when it comes to God's forgiveness. And uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, look if you would in verse number 12. The Bible says, hatred, if you're there in the same place, say Amen. The Bible says, hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. But love covereth all sins. And I don't know about you, but I'm so very thankful that 
that, that God forgave me. Yeah, but preacher, you don't, know, you don't know what I've been through or you don't know what I've done. And the fact of the matter is, I don't know, but I just know this. I know God and I know his love and his love is, a, is very much a forgiving love. In other words, there's not anything that you and I have done that cannot be forgiven. Now, I, I say that because, you know, unfortunately, we live in a world where, you know, we, we're maybe not, not always that forgiving. That is for sure. And, uh, and, and so, but, but I want you to understand, and, and you need to understand, and that is this, no matter how bad our lives have gotten, no matter what we've done, the truth of the matter is, there is a love, there is a love that is so powerful, and there is a love that is so forgiving and no matter what you've done, God will forgive you. You know, come to, come to Christ. Come to the Lord. Yeah, but, but preacher, I'm not worthy. I may be talking to someone online that, you, that that's exactly what, what you feel. And, 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 and I'm just not worthy. And by the way, none of us are worthy enough. That is for sure. And, and so to, to actually think there are some people that are worthy. No, we're not. None of us are. But the thing about it is, and the emphasis is this, it doesn't make any difference what you and I have done and how bad a lies we've lived or, you know, lived. You know, we're talking about the love of God here and, and that it is so forgiving. And, and, and it doesn't make any difference what you, you come to him with. He can forgive you. I want you to know that today because, you know, we live in a world today that sadly enough that, uh, doesn't always understand that at all. And, uh, and so I, 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 I read it again, hatred stirreth of strifes, but love covereth all sins. Would to God also, by way of application, would to God that we could love that way? Would to God that we could somehow treat one another the way God treats us, amen? Take your Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter four, just by way of reminder. We won't stay long here at all, but I, 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 do, I, do, want to, I do want to tell you this, that you know we are told over and over and over again to love one another, and we are, we are told over and over again to live the way God would have us to live. You know, when we get saved, we ought to live like the Lord. We ought to, we ought to strive to be what God would have us to be. And, uh, and that's, that's the way it is. And, and by the way, that includes this whole definition of love. And, 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 and the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, and hopefully you're there by now. I finally got there. The Bible says, I'm going to start with, I'll just start with verse number 28. <clears throat> the Bible says, let him that stole steal no more. Now, again, we're talking about someone that is saved and they're putting, putting off the old man, putting on the new man. The Holy Spirit of God is working in that person's life and he's changing by the grace of God, right? And the Bible, you know, there's a list here uh, that, that, that are mentioned and it says uh, in verse number 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to, to give to him that needeth. And it talks about that. Verse 29 talks about communication and boy, how we need that. And we'll be talking about that this, this month. But the Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And by the way, you're hearing this, this idea, this talk about, even when it comes to communication, apparently you, you ought to think more about what, you know, what, what others are listen, you know, that are listening to you. You ought to be more mindful of their needs and, and instead of your own. That's, that, that's the ideal here. And, and so even when it comes to communicating and, and what comes out of your mouth, hey, you, you ought to consider what, what, what ought to be a blessing to people, not just to get something off your chest because you want to rip their, heart, their, their heads off. And so we find, he, he says in verse number 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed in the day of redemption. The Bible says in verse number 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. I tell you, God expects his children to change. 
and he leads us to change by the grace of God. But now, hold on. In verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And so I tell you, what a blessing to, to, to learn and to understand the power of God's love, but also that it is a forgiving love. And we can think about our own lives, right? And, and what God did and how he forgave us and, and thank God for salvation and all of those things. And I tell you, even today, I know I'm talking to a crowd that, you know, we're not perfect and there, there are times I've gone to the Lord and said, Lord, forgive me for what I did. Forgive me for what I thought. Forgive me for what I said. And he forgives me. He does. And I, by the way, you know, that's for my benefit, for sure. But let me tell you this, and boy, none of us can, can walk out of here today and say, well, that wasn't message for me. We're all our sinners saved by the grace of God. And we're all, you know, still need the Lord and the grace of God to live, you know, each day how he wants us to live. And, and so without a doubt, you know, you know, we ought to be able to understand this and to identify. And so we ought to be able to think, boy, I know what God did when he forgave me. I know, I know, I know I sure wasn't worthy of that. And all of us should say, amen, preacher, that's right. Well, the Bible says, though, because of that, because of that, then that's how you and I are to forgive one another. With the thought and knowing what he did for us. And, 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 so, and so, you know, the power of this love and how forgiving it is. And, and, and so God help us to learn to love this way. It ought to be in the Christian community. It ought to be a part of our lives. I didn't say it was easy, but boy, it's, you know, we're, we're trying to describe the love of God. And, and, and I know some of you might think, well, preacher, I, I've heard this. I know this. Well, we need to be reminded for sure. That is, that is, that is for sure. It's a powerful love. It's a, it's a forgiving love. I won't spend much time here, but I, I, can't, I can't not mention it. I've already mentioned it, uh, <clears throat> I believe, last week. But it's a disciplining love. And you know where I'm going to go. And so I'm just going to just touch on it just a little bit. In, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Take your Bible and turn there right quickly. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. But my goodness. Folks. To know that you are a child of God is so vitally important. But one of the evidences, and this is, I laugh. I have to laugh at this because, you know, it's not always funny. Especially when you're going through it. But it's funny. And that is this. You know that you're a child of God. One of the evidences is when he convicts you. When he, if I may use the word, chastens us. That's the word that is used. And, and, and the writer there reminds uh, these, uh, these are, you know, young Christians, he reminds them that, hey, you know, because you are a child of God, he not only chastens you, in other words, he's not going to just let you do whatever you want to do. And I want you to understand this. He said, another reason is because not only do you not belong to me, but I love you. And because I love you, it is this agape love that I, I, I'm not going to sit by and just let you do whatever you want to do. Because there is a truth, there is a truth about this love that, that the world doesn't have. You know, they, the world calls love and it encompasses so much and, and, and all that. Well, apparently God's love says, hey... I love you so much, and, it, and it, it, it is about truth, and therefore there's a right and there's a wrong, and I'm not going to just stand by and let you just do wrong. And so he says, I love you enough that I am going to chasten you. I'm going to convict you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I tell you, that's one of the evidence. I know I'm a child of God because I got whooped. I just want to throw it out 
you know, that's not what the Bible says. That's, that's my translation of it when I was growing up. But you know what I mean. And I tell you, I, was, I tell you, I, every now and then I, I do things wrong and, 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 I, and I get convicted. But I tell you, in my heart, I'm saying, oh, thank you, Father, for loving me enough to convict me. And to let me know that, that what I, I knew I was wrong. <laughs> but God shows up every time and says, hey, I, what can I say? He's right. And I'm not, but I'm so very thankful he forgives me. He forgives me. And so, and so the, the, it is a disciplining love. I, I tell you, you know, and, and I know that may be confusing because we live in a world where, well, is it, if you really love someone, you'll let them do whatever they want to, right? Well, that's the way it is in a world, but that's not the way it is biblically. Apparently Not. And I tell you, I, I, and I believe without a doubt that, that you know, when, when there are things that are happening in our world today, when our children are doing things that are, not, that, that, that are not right, we can't just not say anything. You know, we, and, so, and so without a doubt, we're going to at least tell them. Obviously, we can't make them do what they don't want to do, but we can at least tell them the truth. Why? Because that is love. I can't just stand by and just, well, whatever, you know. I'm not going to be excited about you doing wrong. Just as much God would not be excited for us to do wrong. I mean, think about it. God sent his only begotten son so that you don't have to live like that. So that you don't have to behave that way. God says there's a better way. And so, and so but it is a, it is a disciplining love. And, I, and I, I did mention it last, the, the last time, and I got a few questions on the, from the Internet from, from people uh, that, had, that wasn't quite sure about what, you know, they've never heard that, that love before. They haven't, they, 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 they were just, I don't, I, what do you mean that if the Lord loves you, he's going to convict you? What do you mean by that? Boy, we live in a world today where there's hardly any, get this please, there's hardly any conviction. Now, folks, you that have inquiring minds ought to inquire about this. I'd, I would first of all ask, why isn't there conviction in your life? Because I know you're not perfect. So there ought to be. And I say that not to point out anybody, but, but, but that's just common because we are sinners and we don't always do things right. But, but we live in a world today that almost anybody can get saved. Uh, and, and, and please understand what I mean by that. Obviously, I know, you know, uh, you know, anyone can get saved if God draws them. I understand that. Okay. But, but, but we live in a world today where you ask everybody, they all think, oh, I'm saved. They don't have a clue about salvation. They don't have a clue about what Jesus Christ did for, for them, but they think they're saved. Now, there, there's a problem there. And so, but, but the thing about it is, and people don't understand the love of God and why God sent his only begotten son, because no one ever thinks they're a sinner. Even when when this so-called preacher stands up in a pulpit and says, oh, no, we don't, we don't talk about sin and sinners. You know, we just talk about the love of God. Folks, you cannot separate the two. You cannot talk about the love of God without talking about the cross and about talking about sin and what Jesus Christ did on an old rugged cross for you and for me. You, you just cannot but the world is so confused, and which I'm not surprised. But what I am surprised is when the church is confused. When God's people don't know what, what, what he's talking about. Because they've sat under a ministry so long that has not been biblical. And that's sad. So I challenge you. And, and I, 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 again, I was, I was a little surprised by the question because I knew who, who it was coming from, and they ought to know better. They ought to know better. 
My friend, this morning, it's a disciplining love. He loved you enough. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me read it like this. The Bible says, for whom the Lord loveth, verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 12, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. It's a chastening, or if, it's a, if I may put it like this, it's a disciplining love, that is for sure. And I, and I say that this morning because it ought to encourage us. You know, I thought I was maybe the oddball out. You know, someone comes to church and they get under conviction. By the way, it ought to happen. It ought to happen when you come to the house of God. And, and uh, as, as some of you put it, well, preacher, you stepped on my toes. It wasn't me doing the stepping. It was the Holy Spirit of God that was, that was doing a dance on your heart. And that's good. And, 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 but, you know, sometimes people, we might walk out thinking, man, I was the only one. I'm, I'm the worst rotten sinner. By the way, we all should think that. Not about you, but about us, you know, about us all. But the thing about it is, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Because believe it or not, whether, whether people will come up to you and say, hey, boy, I really got under conviction. A lot of times we don't like to say that. But the truth of the matter is, probably most people in the service that day got convicted about something. How come? It has nothing to do with how good the preacher is. It does have everything to do as long as the preacher does preaches biblically what he's supposed to preach. It's the Holy Spirit's work that convicts hearts. And I tell you, I, I, I worry about people that, that look for a church. Well, I, I don't want to feel bad when I go to a church. Then you probably shouldn't come here. But I'm just, I'm just telling you, I don't think you ought to, you know, you ought to, you ought to go and you, you just want to, you just want to hear the truth of the word of God. That's what ought to be the case. And I tell you, when God convicts, he convicts. Be quiet, because that's the love of God. God loves his children and he's going to discipline them. He's going to chasten them. And I tell you, may we rejoice and be glad that, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and again, I want to point out that that in light of what the world says about love and come on isn't love you know you just let people do do and be whoever they want to be no that isn't love that isn't biblical love it just isn't come on folks I tell you I love my daughter and and love my grandson and all that stuff and and it would break my heart but I'd have to tell them the truth right I'd have to say, hey, you're wrong. Hey, don't go in there. Hey, don't do that. And if, you know, why? Because I love them. I love them enough that I'll even offend them if I have to. I'll even stop that little, that little boy. I was about to say brat, but I better not say brat. Stop that little boy. From hurting himself. Boy, he's getting to the point. That's what, you know, he didn't, he didn't understand. He doesn't know that there's danger there. He doesn't understand that. Don't you put that in your mouth while he's putting it in his mouth. You better believe that. I tell you, folks, love is always built upon truth. The truth of the word of God. And so, and so, <laughs> I, have to, I have to tell this story. Susan and I have been married for 40 years, as you know. And uh, <clears throat> boy, when we first got married, I thought I was the cream of the crop. I thought that, boy, Susan was, a, was lucky to get someone like me. I know, it's funny now, but anyway. And you know Susan, Susan speaks her mind. And uh, we'd been married, you know, you know, not too long. And well, the day came where she rebuked me. She told me I was wrong. 
<laughs> I didn't know how to handle that. I went through all the emotions of getting offended and, boy, she doesn't love me anymore. And, and well, what, is, what is she doing telling me that? Blah, 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 and all that. I mean, I went through all of it. And then I went to the next room after hours because I wasn't going to be in the same room she was in. But all by myself, it was the Holy Spirit that got a hold of my heart and said that I was wrong. Well, the Holy Spirit can tell me that I'm wrong, but not my wife. Well, I didn't understand for the longest time. Because there for a while I thought she did that because she didn't like me. You know, she thinks she's better than I am. I had nothing to do with it at all. But I didn't understand. She did it because she loves me. She did it because she cares for me. And now, boy, she doesn't beat an eye, and I don't, I, it doesn't bother me at all when she corrects me, which is fewer and far between. Amen. But anyway, we grow, that's for sure. But folks, being a child of God, we ought to know that he chastens me, he convicts me because he loves me. He wants what is best for me and for you. All right, with that in mind, let me, let me, let me continue and bring this to a close because 1 John chapter 3, please take your Bible and, and turn there and, and I'll end with this one. 1 John chapter 3. Bible says, verse 17. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with, um, I'll just start with verse number 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Okay. Obviously, one of the great perceptions and one of the things that you and I can realize about the love, about the love of God is that we could always look to the cross. And there's, that's another message, and we'll do that. But, but the Bible does point us to that. But notice, if you would, in verse 17, though. But whoso hath this world's goods... And seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion for him. And then something comes into question. How dwelleth the love of God in him? In other words, your love of God and, 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 and God dwelling in you comes into question. How dwelleth the love of God in you? If, if, you, if you have, have it in store, in other words, you have things that you have acquired, whatever that may be, but you have what you have and enough. And you see someone in need, and you have that, and you could help that brother, but you don't. The question is, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Wow. You see, the thing about it is, and the point, thing I want to point out to you, apparently this love is a giving love. Now, obviously the example is when it comes to one another and, and all of that. But, but the verse that we read before it, you know, when it talks about, you know, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Of course, that takes us back to John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the, and, and the thing about it is, and this is, it actually gives us the definition of what love is. 
Love, it's, it's, it's agape love. It is a giving love. It is an action word. In other words, it's not just about what we say, but it's about what we do. And, and, and that, that, whole, that whole ideal of, of, uh, is, is also found in, in, the, in the actual, when we say to God, God, I love you. What, you know, well, if we love God, then we're going to do something. You do know what, you know that, don't you? The Bible tells us that if we love God, then we are to keep his commandments. That's what the Bible says. Uh, and so, and so this, I, and so, so we find out that this love is a giving love. It is a love that, that thinks more about, about others rather than themselves. It is, it is embodied in the person of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross of Calvary. That my friend, the Bible says that, that, that God, uh, you, know, gave, you know, that Jesus Christ, you know, was willing to, to give it all up for whatever his heavenly father wanted. And you know that he went to the cross, the garden of Gethsemane. Lord, let this cup pass for me, but not my will, but thine be done. And so, so there it is. But, I, but I'm telling you that this love is a giving love. And, and it has the other person's best interest in mind. I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole reason and why God, you know, God did what he did. Why he sent his only begotten son. Why? Because he had you and I in mind. Giving. And so even when it comes to one another and this ideal of if you have a brother in need and, and you have it by to give to him, but you don't, then there's the whole question, then how dwelleth the love of God in you? Look at this and I'm done. For the Bible says it like this. Verse number 18. My little children... Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Boy, I tell you, those are so valuable. But it has with it this ideal of, of action, of, of doing, of, of uh, but it is, but but it, it, what it is, is it, it has the other person's best interest in mind. It has, it has you know, encap, encapsulated around it this ideal of truth. That no matter what love does, it is, it is action. It, is, it is, is thinking more of the needs of others. But it is always based upon truth. See, that's, that's how you and I ought to love one another. That's how you and I ought to love God. But I want you to know that's exactly how you and I are loved by God. That, that he did what he did because of your best interest in mind. God, you know, one might question, and boy, a lot of people do, God's love. Does God really love us? Come on. All we have to do is look at the cross. You don't focus on, well, I heard him say it. I, 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 you know, he says it all the time. That's not what the, the Bible focuses on. The, the Bible focuses on what God did. What did he do? He gave. And for us, folks, today we could, we could look at it and say, well, he probably just gave uh, just a little bit, Right? Or maybe he just gave what he had left over, right? Well, maybe, maybe it didn't really cost him much. I mean, come on. Sure, he loved, he loved us, but, but just the bare minimum, right? And all of that, no. He gave his best. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. He gave it all. It cost him big time. To actually question the love of God would be foolish. Because the evidence, not based upon what he just said, the evidence is that, oh yeah, you, you know he loves you. All I have to do is look at the cross. No, my friend. That's why John 
in 1 John chapter 4 and in chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Behold, wow, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Boy, what a privilege. My goodness, wow. Because he was so overwhelmed thinking about God's love and what he did for him. My friend, this love that we're talking about is a giving love. Giving love. Look what God did for you and I. A love that thinks more of others than themselves. That's how God loved you and I. My friend, you and I would do well. God help me to love that others that way. I know self gets in the way so often, doesn't it, today? We are selfish people. In a marriage, can I tell you? <laughs> One of these days, that's got to that's gotta get out of your marriage. You cannot live a selfish life and have a happy marriage. We're going to talk about that, but oh, I tell you. Would to God, our prayer would be this. Lord, help me to love the way you loved me. What a blessing. Let's all stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, in a small attempt, we've tried to define love, God's love, by looking at him, by looking at what he has done, by looking at what the Bible says about this love. And oh, my friend, I hope and pray this morning that if anything, you've been reminded about this love. First of all, it's power, how powerful it is. Do you know that there's not anything that can separate you from the love of God? Not anything? Wow. I hope and pray you take comfort in that as our pianist begins to play this morning. You know, it's a forgiving love. Boy, all of us are, are recipients of that, amen? <laughs> Boy, oh, I tell you, the things that God has forgiven us of, without a doubt, you ought to be thankful for that kind of love. It's a disciplining love. <laughs> maybe even right now, God loves you so much, he's not going to let you get away with it. And maybe even use this preacher this morning to convict you of something that, that I don't know, is in your life right now, and, and you're struggling with it, and maybe you've kind of left yourself exposed, and devil's doing everything he can and God knows it and so he's convicting you and he's trying to work in your life and you're not listening you know it's better to submit to that disciplining love to say yes to him and maybe this morning you'll do that oh it's a giving love boy I tell you ah uh, we know it's we know it's a giving love based upon not only what the Bible says, but all we have to do is look at the cross. Some of you may be listening on, online. Never been a time in your life where you've realized you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But maybe God is convicting your heart today. My friend, the only hope we have for eternity is Christ. There's never been a time in your life where you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Why not today? I don't know how God has spoken to your heart. Maybe there's some marriages here today that, boy, I've, heard, I've, I've hit a, a couple of nerves. I don't know. Boy, we got to get this love right. we got to understand it. Lord, I pray this morning, help us to always... Lord, to open ourselves up to you and what the Word of God says in our lives. And so, Lord, would you work? Lord, today, would you have your will and way? May we not get in the way. 
But Lord, may your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As Brother Dave leads us in an invitation to him, you do what God would have you to do. Do business with him. Come on as we sing. What about it, my friend? Oh, maybe, maybe the Lord is trying to get your attention. Maybe he's trying to, to help you to avoid something. I don't know what the need might be, but we want to encourage you to do what's right. Do what God would have you to do. Come on, Bill. What about it? Anybody else? All right. You know. Would you bow your head, please? Well, without a doubt, a very important subject. I hope and pray that God has spoken to your heart. And um, we encourage you today to just do what the Lord would have you to do. Please don't, uh, please don't let the world confuse you from what God knows is right. Let's follow the Lord. Lord, thank you so much for your blessing. And Lord, may your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Tim's going to come and give us some announcements. You may be seated right quickly. All right. Bill. I just want to remind everyone of the service tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, prior to that, the choir will be practicing at 5. Uh, also have our Wednesday evening service at 7. Uh, we will have the Wednesday uh, dinner at 6 uh, o'clock. This uh, week's menu is Italian. If you can help with the food, please see Susan. Uh, the cost is $5, and all the money goes toward our flooring fund. Uh, and again, the service at 7 on Wednesday. Uh, our outreach program on Thursday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, this Saturday, uh, February 10th, is our prayer breakfast for women and men. Uh, it's 9 o'clock here at the church, uh, so plan to attend that. And then on uh, February 17th at 4.30, uh, the Galentine's party for the gals at Bethany Herman's house. Uh, please RSVP uh, to Bethany uh, if you're going to be able to attend. And there is a flyer in the foyer with some information. Uh, Bill, Brother Bill comes wanting to unite into the fellowship of this church. And uh, after talking with him and making sure... Uh, he, uh, he's come from a church of like faith, and, and uh, based, so based upon his statement of faith, uh, all those in favor of receiving him into the fellowship of this church, uh, let him be known by a good hearty amen. Amen. Any opposed, same sign. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to be talking more to uh, Bill, but we want you to come by after the service and just extend to him the right hand of fellowship, and, uh, and we'll... Uh, We'll, uh, uh, Bill, you okay with that? Why don't you stand right there, would you please? All right. Church, let's all stand. Brother Tim. Dear Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity we had to be in your church. Lord, we thank you for uh, the message on love, Lord, especially uh, your love toward us. Lord, we're thankful for that and, and how it provided a way of salvation for us. Lord, again, we thank you uh, for that. Watch over us now. Bless us. We thank you for this one that's joined our Church family, Lord, just watch over Bill and uh, guide and direct him. Lord, just uh, take us home safely, bring us back tonight for the evening service. In Jesus' name, amen.